or normal life because they are afraid of losing their characters. Okay, so they create an adventurer that doesn't want to adventure. <laughs> and I've seen dozens of GMs over the years come across players like this and they throw plot hooks and the players are like, no. And they throw missions and the players are like, no. <laughs> um, and they throw everything for adventuring out there. But the player doesn't want their character adventuring because they don't want to lose. Now, this is big, okay? This is one of the biggest, 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 most important things to understand about playing games. Assured victory is not a game, okay? If you know you're going to win, then you're not playing. Okay, what you're doing is running an errand. Okay, it's like um, in any first world nation, going to the grocery store to buy an apple. That is it. That is what happens when you are assured success. All right. And a lot of players, especially a lot of newer players, a lot of younger players. Um, we've talked about this in the past in regards to sportsmanship. They grew up under two really big umbrellas umbrella one terrible sportsmanship if you lose you suck not you suck at the game not you have to learn more but you whoever you are as a person are a failure you know you 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 can just burn eternally in whatever terrible afterlife that you believe because you lost therefore you were terrible as a person okay or i beat you therefore i am superior to you now take off your clothes put on these chains and plow my field that is what a lot of people grew up with all right um and the second thing is no they're all gonna laugh at you they're all gonna laugh at you you know and one of the main reasons that we play these games okay is because if that is our life, if that has been our childhood, our adolescent hood, if that if that's our work life, you know, push, 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 Delman. That's what you got to do. You got to push all the time. So much pressure, so much pressure. Spend more money, Um, you know, spend more money, make more money, make more money for someone else. Pressure, 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 pressure. We do these things to do something other than that. <laughs> Okay, uh, <laughs> this is a really big thing, all right? Um, we play these games where we can be adventurers. We can be John the Pirate Prince who takes his schooner out and says, I shall protect people from privateers and I shall rob all of the people that work for the East India Company and I shall take down their boats and take all of their booty. <laughs> you know, um... Now, that doesn't mean go murder hobo, okay? That doesn't mean become a serial killer. But um, I get that creating a character in most role-playing games and a lot of board games, um, especially your first time, takes forever, okay? It takes hours. I also understand that if you are at any gaming table with most modern games, okay, then it's not monopoly it's not sorry it's not roll the dice move the piece and call it a day okay um there's a lot of studying that goes into it i don't think very many things are simple and video games have the advantage of hiding the learning curve sort of because it builds on things that people have been doing forever okay i've watched the evolution of um of video gaming Okay, I was there at Atari where it was a button and a stick and everything was like four bit graphics, not eight bit. We're talking black and white, few lines going back and forth. I'm talking pong, y'all. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm seriously talking like this stuff. It was a whole, like if you were to take Overwatch 
into my childhood, people would be like, oh my god, burn them! It's all, it's witchcraft! <laughs> um, but, the thing that inspired today's episode was that when you make a level 1 character, you are more than the average. You start a hero. You start heroically. Now, you're at the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to other heroes. But you are beyond farmers, bartenders, um, baristas, <laughs> you know? And this is, um, this is a really important thing that a lot of players don't quite understand. You start special. Um, some of the things that I do to try and get around this when I'm running games with brand new players is I surround them with regular people. And some of those regular people want to get a little uppity sometimes. You know, I don't like that phrase because I know where it comes from, but y'all know what I mean. <laughs> um, <laughs> level one mob from the start. Nice. Nice. And by the way, zero, zero, one times zero, one, three. Um, welcome. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you for showing up. I'm, I'm glad you caught the announcement. Um, yeah, real talk. Um, hey, we got a new follower following and yeah, I forgot. Um, there we go. Yeah. Just making that a little bigger. Boom. All right. So as I was saying, um, oh, 13. All right, cool. 13. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the real talk, okay. The serious real talk on that is your level one character in D and D is already more than something. I always try and stress that if you're a fighter, you are just out of boot camp. Matter of fact, you might've even served a tour of duty. You've got two years in the military. You know how to fight. Um, <laughs> Oh, I'm Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer. Uh, the channel's called Bid P, as in Back in the Deck Productions. Because if anybody tells you that you shouldn't be allowed to play or be part of whatever community you're with, cosplay, um, comic books, role-playing games, tabletop board games, because of the circumstances of your birth, be it race, religion, creed, gender identity, sexual orientation, any card they pull on, pull on you... You can tell them to put them back on the deck because this stuff is for everybody. There are barriers for people from certain walks of life to get in. And that is what we are here for. We are not just the anti gatekeepers. We kick down gates. All right. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it, it's really one of these things where when new players come in, especially the younger new players, and I'm really reaching out to the, millennials and the and the zoomers out there um hey sad strange little man i'm glad you're here um when it comes to that all right a lot of people are afraid of losing they're afraid of of their characters dying they're afraid of everything because i know in the middle class of the united states i can't speak for anywhere else in the world especially here in california where i grew up um, if you were from the suburbs, you were afraid of everything, everything. You were taught stranger danger. Um, everybody is either out to kill you, kidnap you, or diddle you. That was, that's the base thing that they teach every kid. Therefore, you don't play in the park. You play in the backyard. You don't, uh, talk to anybody unless you meet them in school under the supervision of, uh, your teachers. Um, the only friends you get are introduced to you by friends you already have. There's no adventuring. Like, um, there is so much introversion nowadays that there are a lot of introverts around gaming tables which by its nature is an extroverted activity okay it's a time to pretend it is a time to be someone else it is a time to let your freak flag fly just try not to be a murder hobo <laughs> um serious like serious serious stuff um but a lot of players are like, well, I see a plot hole and that looks like plot. I'm not doing that. My character might get hurt. Um, we'll go shopping. Um, we'll start a tavern. We'll do this. Now, in my darkest days, and I've been GMing for almost 30 years. In my darkest days, I'd be like, oh, you're going to start a tavern? Okay. And then I throw plot in the tavern 
And if I went four gaming sessions of them pouring drinks, <laughs> I'd be like, give me your sheet. You're writing up a new character because you're now an NPC. You're a non-player character. Okay. And let's really look into that. Let, let's really look into that. All right. When you're playing an adventure game, the players of the adventure game play by adventuring. That's not a GM's preference. That's not a matter of opinion. It is how the game is written. Okay. If we look at, um, where is my player's handbook? Um, if we look at the player's handbook, um, there is one character class, two character classes that are good at talking and diplomacy, but on your character sheet, there's not really a bartending skills. <laughs> um, there's not really a farming skill. I mean, there's nature and survival in fifth edition. Sure. Okay. But, um, ah, here it is. Yeah. Um, but every module that you can find is all about the writing stuff we've been talking about on this show. The, your characters have a goal. They're starting the goal, but something happens. Therefore, they must react to what happens. And then they continue along their way. And but, but something happens. Therefore, they must react. So when I was talking earlier, okay, about that risk aversion, the, um, the assured victory, all right? Um, the everyday errand. I'm going to go to the apple cart and buy an apple. Hooray, you bought an apple. They, a lot of new players, a lot of newer and younger players do their best to keep the entire adventuring session down to that. I'm going to get ice cream. I'm going to buy a new shirt. I'm going to buy stuff that will help me better in a fight. Although I do everything I can to not fight. Okay. Um, and that can be frustrating for the GM because the GM can go plot hook, plot hook, plot hook. But if the players say no to everything, then it's, well, I'm going to stick you on a railroad. And then players go, ah, oh, it's just a railroad game. Now you should be more creative than that. And instead of a cooperative gaming experience where one person throws an adventure at five people and five people play that adventure and go through trials and tribulations and overcome adversity, it then becomes us against you and you will lose. And is that really like it, it turns a cooperative experience into a competition? Seriously. Um, and this... Uh, again, I get it. I get that people have been raised with risk aversion. I even get, um, I even get that there is, especially in the United States, a sense of hopelessness, a why try, because there are a lot of people that I know and via the research that I've done with reading articles and watching YouTube videos and talking to college students, there is a very unhealthy level of perfectionism that has been instilled into younger generations. So if they're not going to get 110% on something when no extra credit is offered, why try? Okay. I'm wrong all the time. One misspelling of a word is treated as though they don't even know the English language. Um, if they misspeak or if they get a fact wrong, that ruins all of their credibility for everything. And the fact, the real fact of the matter is though that is how they've always been treated, that is not the way the world works. Okay. Everyone makes mistakes. Nobody's perfect. I know I sound like a dad coming off saying all this stuff, but I have to say it and I can show. But right now we kind of live in a world where when we show the facts, people try and deny the facts, <laughs> you know, so it's a constant push and pull with 
I don't believe you. Prove it. This is it. Well, that's not good enough proof. Okay. What is your criteria? Well, I'll know it when I see it. Uh-uh. Sorry. Can't deal. Okay. Um, so the most important, most important aspects of playing tabletop games is number one, or sorry, number three. Okay. Number three, you're playing this game to be someone other than yourself in a world that's different from the one that you live in. Okay. That is super important. You're playing a different character in a different environment. Okay. There's magic, there's dragons, there's super technology, there's steam powered golems walking around. If you're playing Eberron, if you're playing any of the stuff based on magic, the gathering, there's a whole bunch of different stuff. There's angels flying around. There's goblins and trolls and orcs and pointy eared know-it-all and all that stuff. Hey, thank you so much. 13. Um, that is awesome. Thank you for subscribing. Um, seriously, I, you know, um, so all of the things that you would normally associate with your life, okay, don't apply as intensely as it seems they would otherwise, okay? Um, so yeah, you are in control of a character in a world that's not like the one you're from. <laughs> like seriously, it, it's, I get it. I grew up in LA. Most of my friends are entertainers in Hollywood. And in that particular field, I will tell you, there is always a reason to say no. Not to mention I grew up a black man in the United States. Anything could get me fired. Being pulled over by the police on the way to work, making me late, has gotten me written up a number of times at a number of jobs. I get the pressure. So when we sit at a, down at a role-playing table, when I sit down at a role-playing table, um, I'm looking forward to a world that isn't like the one I grew up in. This is one of the reasons I play a lot of sci-fi and one of the reasons that I really like magic, other than the fact that I'm a natural practitioner of it. But seriously, um, I kind of record as a podcast. What I tend to do is I release the audio from my shows onto SoundCloud, but we're here Monday through Friday at 3 p.m technology given, but I think the show is coming along good. Um, but yeah, so the fact of the matter, okay, the real fact of the matter is I get the pressure. I understand as a GM, as a person, as a dad, I get it. I know all of the pressure and the fear. I mean, my first case of complex um, post-traumatic stress disorder came in the second grade. That being said, understanding where you come from, I also understand that the world does not stop. Okay. Um, it's hard. It's hard for me to put this in words. You know, one of my gaming styles is this when I'm running a game, I put plots out there and I don't make it necessary for my players to follow the plots. But if they're the people that have the power and they don't do anything about the bad stuff that's happening, then when everything breaks, breaks loose and breaks off, there are consequences. And I don't mean I'm punishing you particularly, but I'll play out that whole thing off table. And if the adventuring party that I have, um, goes against the plot that I wrote for my players and loses, then when those players go back to that place, they are suffering consequences. You know, the, where were you when we needed you? You know, there's so much guilt. Um, with this person I talked to yesterday, hang on. They were letting me know that their players did a lot of that stuff. And I'm like, what was the, ex the inciting incident that got Tony Stark involved in the Sokovia Accords and Captain America Civil War. And they were like, that kid dying. I'm like, incorrect. That was not the, the inciting incident because people die in those movies all the time. The inciting incident was the mother of that kid going up to Tony in private going, shame on you. 
You could have done something. All of this happened because of you. Shame on you. <laughs> you know? And when I have my NPCs do that to my players, they feel it. You know, they feel it. The You guys had the power to do something. I'm a turnip farmer. You're a fighter. And we got overrun by goblins. Where were you? You know, I took my pitchfork. I got out there. My son got killed. He's nine. And you were a great big fighter. You're a wizard. You're a cleric. Where were you? Where was your god? You know, why should we follow you? And they're like, oh, well, yeah. I mean, that that's a big thing, you know. Um, and that's the stuff I put out there for my players, you know. And when they go out being murder hobos, I'm like, oh, wait a second. No, you guys are the ones that have been on, on, on the news feeds that have been going on. No, just take my money. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, and next thing you know, this party that got together to do good stuff are now evil because of what they did, not because of what they intended, you know? So again, I definitely understand that. Now I'm putting all this out there because these are the most important aspects you are playing someone who's not you in a world that you don't live in. That is huge. That is so freeing. Okay. When I, when I play Gullstaff, Sorcerer of Light, you know, um, or my old, um, my old Bart, Jagan, he dressed like a jester. Now, he had a double a double job because he was, you know, kind of an evil interrogator that would cover people in butter and psychologically torture them with a puppet after dark. But during the day, this dude was a rock star. He had the he had all the clothes and the bells and literally cast dancing lights every time he walked into a room because he I, 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 I kind of based him on um um an interrogation character I saw John Glover play in a movie some afternoon. I married that character with Freddie Mercury. I was just over the top, right? I'm like, yeah, let's do this. You know, um, I, I learned the lyrics to a whole bunch of songs. So when my GM was like, all right, so you're going to say a poem to distract the king. Cool. And I would recite some song lyrics from my ever growing CD collection. Sometimes it'd be from Tom Waits. Sometimes it'd be from Metallica. Sometimes it'd be from Wu Tang. Who cares? I could be that over the top. But granted, I, Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer, am a 24 karat extrovert. Okay. Um, so I live for my freak flag to fly. Okay, I live for it. You know, um, I'm all conservative ish. And by conservative, I don't mean politically. We don't talk about politics here. But you guys are looking at me with black and blue hair. This is as tame as my hair has ever been. All right. I used to have a black and blue mohawk. I mean, that that's that's how I rolled. Um, so I get it, you know. Um, now miracles of minimum wage brings up something really good. Um, an overthinker and an introvert who in real life might suffer an overabundance of caution. But in game, you can be a, a character who is impulsive or who doesn't overthink stuff. Seriously. Um, I got something from my mom years and years and years ago. And it's a, it's a coin. Okay. On one side of the coin, it says do it. On the other side of the coin, it says screw it. It's my do it or screw it coin. And... When I have a when I have a lot of problems making decisions in general, I tend to use the coin. Um, but when I when I'm kind of stuck in what should my character do, I do everything I can to stay realistic with the character that I created. But I was born in the 20th century, not the 21st, which means Optimization is in my vocabulary, but it is not a foundation stone to what I, um, to what I think, feel, or believe. Okay, um, I've talked many, many times on this show about the dangers of perfectionism, and it comes down to this: perfect is anything but, for one reason perfection 
is so delicate that it cannot function. Okay. And this is, this is coming from an engineer's standpoint. All right. Um, if something is 100% perfect, then the slightest breeze speck of dust shift in the Titanic plates uh, or in the tectonic plates of the planet a sneeze something that isn't completely covered in a hyperbaric chamber which means a change in air pressure or airflow any change to it whatsoever on a molecular level then makes it something other than perfect think about that i have the perfect plate of food it is this this plate is perfect but the moment you move it from where you put it together it has changed the food has shifted at least on a micro level so it's no longer the perfect plate and if it's now the and if you look at the perfect plate well you can't eat it anymore because the moment you stick your fork in it it's no longer perfect it's got holes all right so the idea of optimization has always just blown my mind. Not that it's there, but the, what is the term? The, the ever present dissatisfaction with the lack of the attempt of it. Okay. If you're not trying to optimize your character, then you're doing everything wrong. Shut up. You know, the number one question is this, what is fun? Fun is a subjective term. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, oh, wow. You're hosting. Uh, all right. You're, you know what? Thank you so much, 13. I'm glad that you're here. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I, I, wa I do a lot of research for this channel. I do the research for, th for the games and running my own and to try and keep my finger on what the culture is doing, especially under the COVID stuff. So I watch a lot of YouTube videos. I watch a lot of streams. Um, and the number one type of stuff I see out there is how to get the most power out of your character. And most of it is in combat. Okay. Um, it's a thing. It, it's a thing. Now, being an internet worker, because I'm not a personality, I don't have enough followers. <laughs> um, I understand that people have to put videos out there, especially on YouTube, that will get views. So saying you're doing it wrong people are going to be like what no how am i doing it wrong you i'm gonna watch this video so i can disagree with you or whatever you know clickbait is clickbait um and the more subtle forms of clickbait is how to get the most out of this character class why this character class sucks why you're doing this wrong and i'm like okay stop right there i have the advantage of being a middle-aged man <laughs> And what does that mean? That means I've lived long enough and I've done enough things to know that, oh my God, I can't believe I'm about to quote a Fast and Furious movie. A win is a win, be it by an inch or a mile. Okay. If the table is having fun, <laughs> um, <laughs> you and me both, man. Um, yeah. And a uh, win is a win. If you and your table are having fun and you've got a rule misinterpreted, whatever, it's your table. <laughs> Have fun, you know, um, but a lot of people stand in their own ways of doing that because they've spent so long being judged by other people and judging themselves. Like there is there is a statement in therapy that says depression is anger turned inward. OK, and I promise you. All right. Um, there's stuff on the YouTube channel, stuff on this. I talk about what it was like for me a lot. All right. A whole lot. I grew up in the middle of gang wars. All right. I'm the closest thing. Like if you watch like Boys in the Hood or any John Singleton movie from way back or Friday, that's my neighborhood. Um, if you really want to know what growing up was like for me, watch The Wire. You know, that's what L.A. was like back in my day. And, um, except the cops were dirtier. Um, so 
that's where I come from, which means I was beaten up a lot. I was always laughed at. I was sabotaged and a whole lot of other stuff that I don't say publicly for fear of my videos and stuff getting flagged. But it was it wasn't just rough. OK, there were certain levels of the underworld that I lived through and I made it out the other side relatively OK. And why am I saying this? I'm saying this because I'm wanting you guys to know, I know the voices. <laughs> I do. I know the voices. I know the external judgment. Um, <clears throat> I was talking with my kid not too long ago. And I'm like, why is your self-esteem in the toilet? You are inherently gorgeous. You are really intelligent. Like, so intelligent, like... Seriously, my, my kid is the reason that I'm on TikTok because I'm like, I need to reach more people. Um, what are some of the things that people online do? Because you grew up on the Internet. I was too busy working. And they were like, you know, TikTok is a thing that you might do. And the next time I saw my kid again, they are an adult. I'm like, hey, thanks for the TikTok thing that, that actually worked out. And they were like, you listened. I'm like, why wouldn't I? <laughs> you know, we had a great conversation and they made a case to me. As far as um, Peter Parker being culturally Jewish. And I'm like, I didn't think about that. I don't really see it. And I don't really agree with it. Because um, because of the Jewish characters that are already in the Marvel Universe. And then they showed me stuff. And I'm like, okay, dude. You can research. You're really intelligent. You're very articulate um, when you're making a point. And I don't mean for a black person. I mean people can understand what you're talking about. Um, why do you have no self-esteem? And they're like, well, have you ever heard of gifted kid syndrome? I'm like, I was diagnosed a genius in the second grade. All right, I get it. Okay. So all of these things, I was going through that stuff before they had names for it. And before we lived in a culture that cared about it. And the fact is, excuse me, uh, I'm not saying things were better back in my day. They weren't. You know, way back in my day, parents used to send their kids to other children's house specifically to get sick. <laughs> you know, yeah, no lie. No, no lie. This is not an exaggeration. It's like, oh, well, Sandy has chicken pox and um, Tom hasn't gotten chicken pox yet. So Tom's going over to Sandy's house to play today. <laughs> uh, I'll be right back. I have to get a thing. So, yeah. Um, oh yeah, look at this. Um, so yeah, I mean, the fact of the matter is, um, is I understand. Okay. And the fact of the matter is we play these games, be they board games or stuff. We play all of these elaborate things for pretend to get away from the fact that we should be living up to our potential or, you know, the kid, like my ex-wife used to get, um, used to get laughed at because she would wear riding cloaks to school and she grew up in the suburbs. And there was a point where she told me that she was surrounded by 30 kids that were just calling her names and pointing and laughing. And I'm like, shit, that sucks. And I'm sorry about my language. I did not mean to do that. I normally don't curse on this channel, you know? <clears throat> so I understand it. You know, and the reason that we sit down and we talk about these things, we, we game to have an experience in life that isn't that. But what's important, okay, and again, we're talking about the most important aspects of playing tabletop games, is to recognize that although we play these games to get away from that, we cannot take those things with us into the games and expect to have fun, okay? Um, that's a really big thing. <laughs> um, we want to have fun. We expect to have fun. It's a game, right? It's supposed to be fun. Um, but when the players go in with, they're all going to laugh at me. I'm going to get this wrong. I'm going to blah, 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 whatever. They're walking in to what seems to be a marathon carrying a bag on their back full of heavy things okay um now 
we'll never be able to take all the bricks out of our backpack. We never will. Okay. Because life is life and a good amount of life sucks. You know, there's, um, <laughs> there's a song and I don't really like a lot of modern music, but I listen to the radio when I'm in the car, um, called back in the day, you know, and it's like, yeah, uh, back in the day, I, um, uh, what was it back in the day? I sit and wish I'm not a kid anymore, but some days I sit and wish I was a kid again. And it's like, yeah, back, um, he wakes up every morning and it's like, you know, I like to think about this. I like to think about that. And all I hear is wake up. You need to make money. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's what it's like. Did I not bring my sugar back in here? Oh, you know, getting old ain't easy is what my mom used to say. Anyway, um, but yeah, I mean, there is a lot of stuff. So, you know, keep in mind. When we sit down, and I don't care if it's a board game, a tabletop miniatures game, um, we're playing characters. We're not self, okay? Um, that is one of the most beautiful things on that. Trust me, I can imagine what it's like if we were playing self. You know, this doesn't really cross over into video games as much because in a video game, you're looking at Nathan Drake, you're looking at the Witcher, you're looking at that person run through all that stuff. Um, but on a tabletop game, when you're making all those decisions and you're thinking, I know it's really, really easy to, well, the condition is called bleed. It's, it's when you bleed over into your character. Um, but a lot of times you got to step back and say, wait a second, this isn't the world that I live in. You know, Why? Because when you start applying crappy things from the real world to your world of pretend, your pretend world starts to become crappy like the world that you were trying to escape by interacting with this virtual world. Okay. Oh, you don't believe me? Fine. What are the tax policies in Minas Tirith? How, how is, you know, how is the social justice out there? Does King Aragorn have a progressive LGBTQ policy? Is there slavery? And if so, what model is it? Um, um, are the orcs misunderstood as a culture and do they need to actually be reformed? What is restorative justice in the land of Mordor with Harry Potter? Um, was the transatlantic slave trade taken into account when it came to the wizarding world? And if so, where were the wizards during the Dresden bombings of most of World War II? You know, you, you do all that stuff and it removes the majesty of Harry Potter. It removes the awesomeness of Lord of the Rings. Sometimes you just need some bloody popcorn, guys. Really? Okay. And this brings me to the most important aspect of playing any of these hobbies, anything. The most important thing to remember is this. Pause for dramatic effect. It's not for real. I will repeat that. It is not for real. If your character dies, you won't. When your character dies, you don't go into physical shock. Okay? Trust me. My characters have been stabbed and set on fire and all that stuff. And truth, I have too in real life. Uh, <laughs> so I've gone through both aspects. So when my character catches fire at the D&D table. I know how the character should feel. And I also know how I'm not feeling at that time. <laughs> oh my God, he's on fire. I'm not, look at this. Oh, lack of fire. Isn't that fun? You know, um, my heroic character in a game can make a two story jump fall, lose a couple of hit points, get back up and keep going. It doesn't break its hip. <laughs> okay. It's not real. Meaning all of the things 
that you're afraid might happen to you isn't happening. Okay. Now I could easily say it's just a game. All right. But I really have to stress what it's just a game means, especially to the younger generations of role players out there. Um, it's not you. It's not happening to you. You are not lesser than because you can't figure out the puzzle. In fact, that's what rolling is for. Um, you are not on this adventure. The character that you created is on this adventure. Okay? You are not going to get sick. You are, If you fail the poison roll, you are not going to get dysentery or diphtheria at most tables. Your mileage may vary, but if you might, you might want to check the people you're playing with. <clears throat> All right? So, seriously, relax. It's a fun thing. On the gaming table, at the tabletop, um, on the board game, you can take risks. You can do wacky things. It's okay to lose. You know, back in my days of tournament stuff, um, I would, you know, I was a tournament judge for Privateer Press, um, for Decipher, for a lot of different things. Just not bragging, give them bona fides, okay? Or my bona fide. Um, when I would get into a tournament, I would talk to the players and I would be like, okay. You realize that this tournament does not affect the national opening, right? So whatever score you get here won't affect your national score. I know there are people that do this for a living, but the tournaments that are host are not um, connected to those organizations. Do you still want to play? Okay. Primarily because I have a major, major rule, and this is with anything I do for fun. Okay. The moment the fun that I get into is as much, if not more, more work. And I mean, um, complication. There's a difference between effort and work, but once my hobby or whatever it is I do for fun becomes more work than the work that I get paid for, it's time to do something else. And I've gotten out of a lot of games. And I mean like a lot of franchises. I stopped playing War Machine because in order to keep up with my friends, I had to spend as much time and effort to play with my friends as I did at a 40 hour a week job. And that's not what I'm in this for. Now, because of this podcast and the website and the community outreach stuff and the Patreon and the YouTube channel, it is my full time job. So I can spend that time researching the videos and all that stuff and people were like well if you love it you wouldn't mind i'm like i don't mind because i do love it except i have to do it at your pace and this competition to keep up with what you know so i can stay in this thing i don't love that so yeah that, that's a big thing so real talk these are just games games are supposed to be fun and when you are playing, like, here, here's the thing. When you're playing Monopoly, are you actually a shoe? Are you a car? You're not. Okay. Um, if you lose at Monopoly. <laughs> um, yeah, and you'll also be able to um, look on this on VOD because... The, Twitch keeps up um Twitch keeps up the videos for a couple of weeks. So check out the archive on the channel. And thank you, 13. Um, so yeah, um, when you're playing all these games, when you're playing sorry, are you a plastic Hershey's kiss with a ball bearing on, on your head? No. When you're playing um Monopoly, are you a top hat? No. I get it. You're anthropomorphizing things, you're giving it personality, you're doing all this stuff. But at the end of the day, you were you. And um Ryan <laughs> um Ryan um Ryan Bar um Musgrave Necromancer of Yore is Ryan 
Musgrave, Necromancer of Yore. Okay? I mean, seriously. Give it a thought. Um, and don't worry, we're about to wrap up too, because we're like 10 minutes over time. But I want to give a major shout out to, of course, uh, new follower 13, uh, Clever Little Vixen for holding up uh, for holding up everything. And of course, we got our boy, um, good old Khan! Also, uh, Boss Undy. Uh, hey, Laura Craft. Um, Miracles Minimum Wage and Sad Strange Little Man. Thank you guys for popping in. Um, this has been a good show. And this is a conversation that I've been wanting to have with a lot of people for a while. All right. So just remember, we play these games for fun. We play these games to be people that we aren't Monday through Friday. And to explore strange new places that we don't live in. <laughs> you know, uh, these places that we don't live in, these worlds that we don't populate, but we can do so here and here, but we're not doing it here. Okay. Trust me. If I could live on earth that Starfleet runs, I am out of here until that day. <laughs> um, I'm stuck here in the 21st century. Um, I'm living through the 1920s, you know? So yeah. So with that guys, Oh, thanks Stargate. Yeah, is that, yeah, Stargate, huh? Yeah, see ya, Stargate, heart. Um, major shout outs to all of you lurkers out there too. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. If you guys got any questions or comments or anything like that, feel free to send them to back in the deck at gmail.com. That's B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K -E -E at gmail.com. Hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at back in the deck. Um, check out the TikTok um, um, I'll put something up there when I put something up there. It's a thing. Um, mm, excuse me. Ah, mm. but yeah. And with that, oh, thank you very much. Uh, miracles of minimum wage. we got to cheer. Um, so yeah, but with all that, I got to say, um, have fun, play games, be creative. And if anybody tells you that you can't like what you like because of the circumstances of your birth, be it race, religion, creed, gender identity, sexual orientation, your disabilities, or your budget, you tell them to take any of them cards and put them back in the deck. This is Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer, saying thank you guys for joining me, and we will see you guys next time on the dark side of the room.